chapter one of the forbidden way this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org recording by tony oliva the forbidden way by george gibbs chapter one sharp practice the young man in the swivel chair drummed with his toes against the desk while he studied the gaudy fire insurance calendar on the wall before him his pipe hung bowl downward from his lips and the long fingers of one hand toyed with a legal document in his lap something new is hatching in this incubator he muttered at last dripping his pen in the ink bottle again and i think i think it's an ugly duckling of course it's no business of mine but he looked up suddenly as a bulky figure darkened the doorway hello jeff jeffrey nodded and walked to the water cooler mulrennan's been here to see you three times said the man in the swivel chair each time he's been getting madder i wish you'd keep your appointments or get another office boy that man's vocabulary is a work of genius even you in your happiest humors why what's the matter with your face ray put his fingers up four red streaks ran parallel across his cheekbone he touched the marks with his hand then looked at his fingertips oh that seems like i must have butted into something he gave a short unmirthful laugh don't make me look any prettier does it funny i didn't feel it before and then as he turned to the inner office is mulrennan coming back he asked yes at five ray glanced at the clock has bent been in no when will those papers be ready to-night if you want them good ray turned with his hand on the knob of the door when pete comes send him back will you larry larry berkeley nodded and ray went into the back office and closed the door behind him he took out his keys and unlocked the desk but instead of sitting at once he went over to a cracked mirror in the corner and examined his face grinning at his image and touching the red marks with his fingers that was a love tap for fair he said i reckon i deserved it but she oughtn't to push a man too far she was sure angry won't speak now for a while he turned with a confident air she'll come around though he laughed you just bet she will then he sat down at his desk took a photograph in a brass frame out of the drawer put it up against the pin-rack before him and folding his arms across the blotter gazed at it steadily for a moment it was a mean trick wasn't it camilla girl he muttered half aloud i'm sorry but you've got to learn who you belong to there can't be any fooling of other fellows around jeff ray's girl i just had to kiss you had to put my seal on you camilla i reckon you put yours on me too black and blue he laughed ruefully you'll forgive me though a diamond necklace or so will square that you bet it will he put the picture down hid it away and took up some papers that lay before him but when a while later larry berkeley showed mulrennan in they found him sitting with his face to the window looking out with his baby stare over a hundred thousand acres of the hermosa company come in pete and shut the door you don't mind larry mulrennan and i have got some private business then when the door was closed he said in a half whisper well what did you find out about the lone tree mr mulrennan carefully sought the cuspidor then wiped his brow with a dirty red handkerchief what didn't i find out god jeff that mine's lousy with sylvanite the watchman was asleep and we got in scrumptious like it's halfway down that short wince they made last fall max had put some timbers up to hide it and we pulled em down we only had matches to strike and couldn't see much but what we saw was a plenty it's the vein all right holy mother 
but it started my mouth to wathern i haven't had a wink of sleep where in h hell have you been all day business said jeff vaguely in the mountains it's no time to be pothering about with little matters mulrennan brought his huge fist down on the table you've got to nail this deal jeff to-day to-day bent hasn't been back well you've got to find him now what for see here pete cool down can't you see if i go after him he'll get suspicious and then good-bye to everything you leave this deal to me he'll sign larry's drawing the lease bond now maybe tomorrow. tomorrow tomorrow will be too late that's what i'm getting at max is ugly ray clenched his bony fingers over the chair arm and leaned across the desk max he whispered angrily what he's out for more money he talked pretty big last night but this morning he broke off breathlessly oh i've had the h l of a day what did he say he's talking of going to the mine owner he says after all court bent never harmed him any and it's only a matter of who gives him the most ray got to his feet and took two or three rapid turns up and down the room d n him he muttered and then suddenly where is he now up the bar playing pinochle with fritz are you sure he was twenty minutes ago i haven't left him a minute except to come here fritz is losing money to him i told him to that will keep him for a while but ray had already taken up his hat come let's go up there we've got to shut his mouth some way he said through set lips i've been promising myself sick but he's a sharp one god but i wish them papers were signed sighed mulrennan as they passed through the office jeff stopped a moment if bent comes in larry tell him i'll be back in half an hour understand don't seem anxious just tell him i'm going to denver and want to settle that deal one way or another as soon as possible berkeley nodded and watched the strange pair as they made their way up the street ray his head down and hands in his pockets and the irishman using his arms in violent gestures i'm sure it's an ugly duckling commented the sage it was three years now since berkeley had come to colorado for his health and two since fate had sent him drifting down to mesa city and jeff ray mesa city was a boom town three years ago when the jackpot mine was opened it had become the sudden proud possessor of five hotels and saloons three general stores four barber shops three pool rooms a livery stable and post office its main and only street was a quarter of a mile in length and the plains for a half mile in every direction had been dotted with camps of the settlers it had almost seemed as if sawash county had found another cripple creek a time passed and then mesa city awoke one morning to find that the gamblers the speculators and the sporting men and women had gone forth to other fields and left it to its fate and the town knew that it was a failure but jeff ray stayed on and when berkeley came he stayed too partly because the place seemed to improve his health but more largely on account of jeff ray what was it that had drawn him so compellingly toward the man he liked him why he could not say but he did and that was the end of it there was a directness in the way ray went after what he wanted which approached nothing berkeley could think of so much as the unhesitating self-sufficiency of a child he seemed to have an intuition for the right thing and though he often did the wrong one berkeley was aware that he did it open-eyed and that no book wisdom or refinement would have made the slightest difference in the consummation of his plans berkeley was sure as ray was sure that the only reason jeff hadn't succeeded was because opportunity hadn't yet come knocking at his door 
he liked ray because he was bold and strong because he looked him in the eye because he gave a sense of large areas because his impulses bad as well as good were generous and big like the mountains and plains of which he was a part his schemes showed flashes of genius but neither of them had money enough to put them into practice he was always figuring in hundreds of thousands or even in millions and at times it seemed to berkeley as though he was frittering his life away over small problems when he might have been mastering big ones at others he seemed very like mulberry sellers munchausen and d'artagnan all rolled into one what was happening now berkeley could not determine so he gave up the problem and when his work was done filled his pipe strolled to the door and watched the changing colors on the mountains to the east of him as the sun sinking lower found some clouds and sent their shadows scurrying along the range to the southward with his eye he followed the line of the trail up the canyon and far up above the cottonwoods that skirted the town he could see two figures on horseback coming down he recognized them at once even at that distance for they were a sight to which mesa city had become accustomed camilla and bent he muttered i'm glad jeff's not here it's been getting on his nerves i hope if bent sells out he'll hunt a new field there are too few women around here too few like camilla i wonder if she really cares i wonder he stopped his eyes contracted to pinpoints the pair on the horses had halted and the man had drawn close to his companion leaning forward was he fixing her saddle an unconscious exclamation came from berkeley's lips he's got his nerve right in plain view of the town too what the girl's horse suddenly drew ahead and came galloping down through the scrub oak the man following berkeley smiled the race isn't always to the swift court bent he muttered at the head of the street he saw miss irwin's horse turn in at the livery stable where she kept him but courtland bent's came straight on at an easy canter and halted at berkeley's door is ray there asked bent no but he told me to ask you to wait won't you come in just tell him i'll be in in the morning jeff may go to denver to-morrow said larry but of course there's no hurry bent took out a silver cigarette case and offered it to berkeley see here larry he said what the devil do you fellows want with the lone tree are you going to work it or are you getting it for someone else of course it's none of my business but i'd like to know just oh i'm not in this this is jeff's deal i don't know much about it but i think he'd probably work it for a while together they walked into the office and berkeley spread some papers out over the desk jeff told me to draw these up i think you'll find everything properly stated bent nodded huh. he feels pretty certain i'll sign doesn't he berkeley stood beside him smoking and leaning over his shoulder but didn't reply bent laughed well it's all cut and dried seems a pity to have put you to so much trouble larry i haven't made up my mind they say twice as much money goes into gold mines as ever comes out of em i guess it's true if it wasn't for jeff ray in this deal i'd sign that paper in a minute but i've always had an idea that some day he'd make his pile and i don't relish the idea of his making it on me he's a visionary a fanatic on the gold in these mountains but fortune has a way of favoring the fool sounds as though you might be talking about me said a voice from the doorway where jeff stood smiling his broad figure completely blocking the entrance bent turned confused but recovered himself with a short laugh yes i was he replied slowly i've put twenty thousand dollars in that hole in the rocks and i hate to leave it 
jeff ray wiped his brow went to the cooler drew a glass of water and slowly drank it well my friend he said carelessly between swallows there's still time to back down you're not committed to anything neither am i suit yourself i'm going to get a mine or so but i'm not particular which one the daisy looks good to me but they want too much for it the terms on your mine the lone tree just about suited me that's all it's not a big proposition it might pan thirty or forty to the ton but there's not much in that not a way up there take my offer or leave it bent i don't give a d n he tossed his hat on the chair took off his coat and opened the door of the back office larry he added you needn't bother to stay i've got some writing to do i'll lock up when i go if mr mulrennan had been present he would have lost his senses in sheer admiration or sheer dismay berkeley remembered that bluff later when he learned how much had depended on its success but it worked beautifully oh well said bent peevishly let's get it over i'll sign are you ready to make a settlement End of chapter 1